Hi there, Mr. Sutton here bringing you the IM311 Part 2 Homework Solutions on Solving Systems with the Graphing Method. For this problem, we're trying to solve this system by graphing. So we have two lines here. We have a, a vertical and a horizontal line. And to help me graph these, I just write out Hoivux to remind myself of what to do in which situation. So for this first one, x equals 2, that's the Vux part of this. If I only have an x, that's telling me I have a vertical line. So this is the vertical line where the x value is always 2 no matter what the y value is. So that's this vertical line right here going through x equals 2. And now y equals 4. If you just have a y, that's the hoi part of this. That's a horizontal line. So that is uh, giving me a horizontal line through 4. The y value is always 4 no matter what the x value is. So there's that horizontal line. And these are going to cross at the point 2 comma 4 x equals 2, y equals 4, not a coincidence there. So that is the solution to this system. For this problem, I'm trying to solve this system of linear equations. Now these are both lines. These are in that Hoivux form, uh, where you basically either have a vertical or a horizontal line. So for this first one, x equals negative 3, well that's giving me Vux right here. The presence of only an x with no y value tells me that this is a vertical line x is always going to be negative 3, so I don't need to know the y value. At all y values, my x value is negative 3. So let me just draw, draw a vertical line through x equals negative 3 right here. And for this next one, y equals 2, that's hoi. Uh, the only having a y in there tells me this is a horizontal line. This is saying that y is 2 no matter what your x value is. So I'm going to do all the y values of 2 right here to get this horizontal line. And to get the system solution, that's just where these lines are crossing. So that's going to be at this point, negative 3, comma, 2. In order to solve this system of equations by graphing, I have to graph both of these out and see where they cross, if anywhere. So to do that, I actually want to put them in y equals mx plus b, or slope-intercept form first. That'll make them easier to graph. So to do that, I basically just have to get y by itself in each of these. So for this first one, I'm going to subtract 21x to the other side. So I'll have negative 7y equals 21 minus 21x, or actually I'm going to write it negative 21x plus 21. I just like having that x first. And then to get y by itself, I have to divide everything by negative 7. So that'll give me just y on the left side. And on the right side, while this first term, let's see, dividing by negative 7, that'll be positive 3x. And then this will be minus 3. So that gives me something I can graph. Before I do that, though, let me just uh, rearrange this other one right here. So over here, I will subtract 9x from both sides. And then I'll divide everything by negative 3 to get y by itself. So that gives me y equals. And now over here, I'm going to have positive 3x and then plus 2. Let me graph each of these now for this first one. Using y equals mx plus b form, I have a b value or y-intercept of negative 3. So I'll go over here and I'll put a dot on negative 3. That's where I begin. And then this 3x, the m value, the slope is 3. So that's telling me I'm going up 3 over 1. This is really 3 over 1. So we go up 3 over 1, put another dot, draw the line connecting those. And you have to be pretty accurate because you're trying to see where these uh, lines are going to cross. So I'm going to go up 3 over 1 again up here. Notice that I've got the same slope consistently everywhere. Now for this next one, I have a y-intercept of 2. So let me put that dot right there. And this is also 3 over 1. So up 3 over 1 from this dot that I just put on here. So up 3 over 1 brings us right here. And if you go that in the opposite direction, so I guess you'd be going down 3, left 1. Uh, that would bring you down here, down here. So drawing that line out, I see these are actually parallel lines, um, which makes sense because they have the same exact slope. So these are never going to cross. And since they never cross, that means that this system has no solution. In order to solve this system of equations by graphing, I need to rewrite these in y equals mx plus b form and then graph them out to see where they intersect or cross. So for this first one here, 
I basically, for both of these really, I need to get y by itself because it's y equals mx plus b. So to do that, I'm going to subtract the 4x from both sides. That'll give me negative 4x minus 48 on the right side. And then I'll divide both sides by positive 12 to just get y on the left side. So that'll just give me y on the left side, y equals. And then negative 4 over 12, I can rewrite that as negative 1 over 3, and I still have that x there. And then negative 48 divided by 12, that's going to be negative 4. So there's my first line. I'll graph that out in a sec, but let me just rearrange this other one, make it look a little bit nicer. So over here, let me subtract 4x from both sides. And now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. Notice that this is still a negative over here. I didn't lose my negative sign. So I'm going to have y on the left side and negative 4 divided by negative 6. Well, I can reduce that to positive 2 over 3, and I'll still have an x there. And then a positive 6 divided by negative 6, that's going to be minus 1. So that gives me something I can graph for that equation. All right, so for this equation on the left, I'm going to begin at the y-intercept here of negative 4. So that's going to be right here. And then this negative one-third slope, the m value, that's telling me that I'm moving down 1 over 3. I'm just going to choose to put the negative with the numerator there. Uh, so we're going down 1, right 3. And now let me just draw a line. And I'm just going to make sure I'm doing that slope of down 1 over 3 consistently. I have to be fairly accurate because I really do need to see where this line intersects the other line. Now for this next one, I have a y-intercept of negative 1. So let me put that dot right there. And this 2 thirds slope is telling me I'm going up 2, right 3 to stay on the line. So up 2, right 3, that takes me right here. And I'm also going to go uh, down 2 and left 3 to go the other direction. So there's my line for this one. And I see that these lines appear to be crossing at, this is negative 3 comma negative 3 for my point of intersection. So that's also the solution to my system. In order to solve this system by graphing, I have to first put these in slope intercept or y equals mx plus b form so that I can graph them. For the first one, I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides, basically trying to get y by itself here. Notice that I have a negative 3y still there. I didn't lose my negative. Dividing by negative 3 now so that it's y equals, I have y equals and then negative 6 divided by negative 3. That's going to be positive 2x. 3 divided by negative 3 is minus 1. So there's my mx plus b form for this that I'm going to graph in just a moment. Let me get this other one in mx plus b form though. Uh, so we subtract 10x from both sides and then divide by negative 5. That'll be y equals, whoops, here we go, uh, y equals, and this will be negative 10 divided by negative 5, so 2x, and this is minus 1, 5 divided by negative 5. So graphing these out, we've got uh, inter y intercept of negative 1, so that's down here, and the slope of 2, that's really 2 over 1, we have an invisible 1 denominator. So starting at my y intercept, I'm going up 2 right 1, and I can keep doing that to get this line here. Now looking over at my other equation, I have a y-intercept of negative 1 and a slope of, hmm, up 2 over 1. Wait a second, that's the same exact line. So if we have just two lines that are basically the same line, that means they're going to touch everywhere, which means we have infinite solutions, not just one solution.